welcome back. So the second half of the week starts out with Jeff uh, doing the final prep to uh, close out the uh, streak tanks, uh, you know, with the upper skins there. So uh, that's what he's been working on there. And uh, I started working on uh, creating those push rods that I realized that I hadn't done yet uh, for the elevator, the ones that go from the torque tube in the cabin to the pass-through. And then on the outside of the cabin, the one that goes from the pass-through to the bell crank uh, that goes out to the elevators. So here I've just got the machine going again and I'm just drilling out um, a hole there in the end of this uh, aluminum rod there. So I can tap that and, um, and put a rod end in there. And this one's using the slightly larger rod ends than I've been using before. These are kind of like AN4 equivalent quarter inch uh, thread. So I did uh, left hand, right hand thread again, so I can make sort of, um, you know, very sensitive adjustments to those without actually having to disconnect and end from there. Um, so yeah, that's what that one looks like. And that's the longer one that lives uh, in the cabin. And uh, there it is in place now. So you can see it's uh, connected to the little bracket there on the torque tube and then uh, goes through the pass through and that's it uh, actuating there. So linkages are all actually now done in the cabin. And you see I've got the um, the side stick, which I had that connected before. So I'm happy with how that's working now. And uh, so that's another another one done. And that's what it looks like on the outside there. And I had to actually clear out a little section there on that bottom bell crank because I was getting interference there. And a lot of having not done this before, you kind of forget about some things that are going to collide with each other, especially in the solid works where you're not always looking at a full-on animation of how something moves. And uh, here Devin's been uh, painting all those uh, hangers and hinges for the elevator, just um, with um, an etch primer. So eventually they'll get, you know, painted final color, but it won't be until we, you know, paint the whole aircraft. And this is what it looks like, those ones there with the bearings uh, pressed into place. So and just, uh, I think Jeff and Devin were just pressing those in. They didn't take long, there's only eight of them. To do and so that's how they hinge with the other ones uh, around that uh, sort of like a rod end bearing there and now I'm finishing off the last of the brake lines in the cabin so I had to do ones that join uh, between the cylinders on either side and then also um, lines that run from there to the uh, the anti-lock system and then the lines that ran from the cylinders up to the bulk the bulkhead pass-through where it goes to the the reservoirs so there's a one reservoir for the left um, brake and one for the right brake so here i'm just basically hooking up one of the lines there that runs from the right hand side right pedal or right brake i should say over to the left hand side um, pilot um, again to the right pedal and there you can see just banjo fittings there onto the um, the brake cylinder and I'll be cable tying those lines there so they don't um, sort of move around too much but they need some freedom because they have to move with the pet with the pedals when not only when you're pushing them back and forward but when you make the adjustment in there for you know people with the longer legs or shorter legs um, that needs to be a little bit of movement on those brake lines and here you can see moving the pedals back and forth you can see how the brake cables um, need to or the brake lines need to move with those pedals somewhat so um, this actually worked out really good though because you know you've got independent pedals that you can adjust the length and uh, it's very neat you don't actually see the cylinders are hidden behind the legs so uh, it's, I think overall I'm pretty happy with how the brake um, pedals and rudder pedals and stuff turned out um, they're a bit heavy but you know they're overbuilt and that, that just shows you there how it sort of fits on my foot my size nine and a half foot there uh, but anyway i think they're going to be comfortable and uh, devon did a little layup over those two studs there for that new little bracket there that helps um, mount up that uh, autopilot servo for the aileron and uh, here's the uh, inside of the strike tank there and a lot of people ask where's the fuel cap where's the fuel this is it goes in here and it's all sealed with a jeffco so um, when that lid goes on the top there, it closes everything out and um, you get, you know, a watertight or fuel tight tank. And so, anyway, uh, here's Devin just uh, w working on sanding the uh, edge there that matches up or sort of mates up to the ed edge of the cabin. So, 
and once it's bonded in place there Jeff can just run like a little small quarter inch fillet along that edge there and uh, here's the other tank there the other straight tank all cleaned out and wiped out and blown out and everything like that just all ready to be bonded um, and have the lid put on and this little section now is just basically all the inside bits of the tank there so I'll let you watch all that and it's, this is mainly so we have a good record of it in one of the videos if we ever need to look and, and see oh, how is this all laid out again uh, anyway enjoy this for a minute or so Okay, so on to the next thing. Uh, back in the cabin now, um, I've got the AC unit um, fitted into place. And when um, Dan was around, he created some brackets for this, but it had never been uh, fully fitted. So I've just gone and uh, cleaned those up and got those all anchored in various different places. So now that's supported. And uh, meanwhile, here's uh, Jeff and Devin, and um, Jeff is working on their drilling out the ribs to match those. Uh, elevator uh, arms there you can see he's got one of them bolted on there and you're going to get a little bit of a, a surprise about those in a minute and there's uh, one of the ailerons uh, that's had now the leading edge of it uh, closed out just had a little layup sort of wrapped around the front of it um, which it needed just you know just a thin carbon layup and then the other one's just in the process there of getting done so that will pretty much finish out those ailerons there's nothing else to do on those and that's a uh, how things played out on Thursday and on to Friday morning now I've got the AC unit back out and I've installed these little uh, temperature sensors there that are in the various um, different places there and those are the ones that hook up to the little climate control add-on that is like a aftermarket bit that comes with this and you can see how I got all those brackets mounted there now and also running running the SCAT tube there I think that's what you call it um, so there's another one coming out of there and those two top ones there run to those uh, vents there on the top of the glare shield and then the other ones all come out the front and then back in the center console so that's where those ones connect to there for the um, the defrost for the windshield so that one's uh, almost sorted out there and uh, here Devin and Jeff are just uh, cleaning off the peel ply there on those leading edges of the aileron there where they did those layups there the previous day so I, I believe now that the ailerons are pretty much done and back in the cabin now so I've got the uh, left side stick installed now as well and the linkage there at the back there that hooks it up to the elevator torque tube I got that one all sorted out there now just um, you know with with the uh, the little double rod end thing that I did before and you can see there's the other brake lines I finished those off as well those are the ones that run through the bulkhead there to the um, the reservoirs for each of the left and right brake cylinders and there's the crossover ones that go from the one pilot to the other it's been interesting how they recommend um, you know to to plumb this it goes from one to the other and then to the brakes so and I uh, had the guys uh, put some of the hangers on there but we had just this is for the elevator but 
Mark had um, discovered this problem with the elevators in that um, the way that I had designed them, the hinge point was too far back and it was going to cause um, a, a bit of a problem with um, stability. So last minute decision, we actually had to go and change those and um, make them so the uh, arms were shorter and the position of the, the rotational point there was further forward. It needed to be at the quarter chord length and we had it about, I don't know, 0.36 chord length. Anyway, so real, real bit of a pain there. Um, kind of, as Jeff said, the elevators are becoming the new doors. <laughs> so, but uh, anyway, I think we've sorted them out and we've got the geometry all done and, and you'll see in a minute that I did sort of a last minute thing this afternoon and got um, the brackets shortened, at least most of them, and also re-drilled the holes and stuff in the ones for the elevator. Um, so anyway, you'll see that coming along shortly. And uh, right here I'm actually working on just drilling out these uh, little uh, clevis pins with these tiny little holes there, I think the point um, 70 thou hole I think is what I'm doing, just enough to put a cotter pin in there. So I'm drilling out two of those right next to each other in, in uh, four of these pins. And these are the pins that actually are part of the rudder pedal assembly and they allow you to make that adjustment um, on that quadrant so you can uh, move the pedals either closer to you or further back. And so what I'm drilling this hole for is so you can put this big wide area washer with a spring in it and you can just reach behind there to pull back the pin so you can change the position on the quadrant and uh, you know it is a prototype and you know this is something that'd be great to just do it you know with a little solenoid eventually but um, just don't have the time or um, anything to get that sorted out so it's just a manual um, little system right now and you'll see that's what it looks like a clevis pin like that with a wide area washer and uh, two little cotter pins through it and there'll be a spring in there and uh, you'll see it in a second here at how it uh, plays out in the elevator uh, oh, sorry in the rotor pedal and so here you can see there I'm drilling it so I'm using my ma massive monster machine with a 10 foot by 10 foot table to drill this tiny little hole in this um, in this clevis pin <laughs> so anyway and you know I had to actually get my centering uh, drill bit first to uh, start the hole there because otherwise the, that regular little skinny little drill bit would have just ran down the side there um, just bends so anyway had, it was a two-step process get the centering drill bit and drill start the drill holes for you know the first hole and the second hole and then come back and change the bits to the small bill and the small bit and then uh, drill it all the way through uh, for both of those holes so I had eight holes to do and I had 16 goes at it because of the centering drill bit um, starting with that. Okay, so here we are with one of the rudder pedal sets and there you can see that clevis pin there with the washer through there. And it basically engages that quadrant and you see there's a little spring in there now in between there. So you just reach your finger in there and just grab that washer and you can pull that back and then move the rudder um, into where you want it to be and then uh, let it go and it will engage the nearest hole and same on this side so it's a pretty simple little system and it's not the sort of thing that you'll be doing in flight but at least prior to flight you can get that sorted out to adjust the rudder pedals for you so then I got the uh, heater AC unit installed back in there so the next thing to do with this guy and it's going to be Monday is create those four lines there the two heater lines and two AC lines and join them over there where they go through the bulkhead and then ultimately they end up running all the way down back to the engine which you've seen before and there's the control unit for that the little Dakota digital one that's now installed in that center stack and looks good there with the vinyl there I've still got the protective little plastic on there I'll take that off right before the first flight possibly and uh, here Jeff and Devin are just um, prepping up the Jeffco so they were actually going to close out one of the wings on Wednesday it turns out the hardener had gone off they started mixing stuff up and it, it literally just went off in minutes and so um, Jeff had to wait and we had to order some more from Spruce so it came in on Friday around lunchtime and so you can see he's put nice big beads of it out there because you want lots of it you're holding that wing skin on there on those flanges so um, and again it doesn't take long for this stuff to go off even with the, the um, new hardener in there so we managed to get the first one uh, done and you'll see that here shortly 
And uh, as I said, here's the first of those um, elevator hangers going under the knife again. And I'm basically what I'm doing is I'm moving that hole there that has the bearing in it, moving it up uh, 1.7 inches from where it was up the arm, drilling or cutting out that hole again, and then re-reaming it, and then uh, you know just shortening the whole thing. So here's see I've cut the hole already, and now this path is just going to shorten that um, bracket off a little bit. Um, so and then on the on the actual um, brackets that connect to um, the elevators themselves, those are going to be sort of shortened as well. We're cutting the tops off of those and just uh, repositioning the two holes that are bolted to uh, the inside ribs of the elevator. Um, so anyway, it's a it's a quick fix um, and it solves the problem of, of this um, r rotational position being uh, behind the quarter cord position, which you know creates an instability in the controls, and we just don't want to have that. Um, Anyway, so here's this um, straight skin, and that's the first one bonded on there. A couple of Clecos on the front, and then uh, uh, just a flat rod on the trailing edge there where it goes over the spar. And some heavy cast iron uh, manifolds on there to hold it all down so it stays bonded into place. And see, Jeff hasn't put on anything in the middle there because he doesn't want it to create any sort of indentations in it. In it. And so uh, here's one of those brackets there. I had it come off the machine and um, Devin's already gone on and just spray painted just on the underneath there where it was cut off shorter so you really can't even tell it was changed at this point so on Monday um, I'll be able to finish the last couple of those I was working all the way through till 6 30 um, this evening Friday evening and uh, to try and get all these done I managed to get six of them done and uh, the other two still have to go so uh, there's what the uh, ones look like. So I created this um, little fixture there, a little jig with already the holes, the existing holes and the new holes in it. And I used that to drill out the first couple of these brackets there. And uh, because that jig was a softer aluminum, I decided to use one of the, the drilled out ones as my little jig after that. As you can see, I've got the two of them bolted together there. And just put that on the uh, drill press there and just drill one hole through to the other hole. And that's our new hole position there for inside the elevator and then ultimately the top of those will just get uh, cut off and uh, cleaned up and painted again. So that's a, a bit of a pain having to do that but uh, again because prototype. Uh, so that's our update for the second half of this week and thanks again for watching and if you're new here please subscribe there's all sorts of awesome stuff coming up soon and you don't want to miss anything so we'll see you guys all next week.